All right, so let's get into goal setting for school gardens. We are Grow NYC. We're uh, an environmental nonprofit that's been doing work in New York City for over 50 years now. And we have programs to protect the environment, create green spaces, help people stay healthy, and give them opportunities to make a positive impact. We work in a few different areas of conservation, um, green space, education, and food access and agriculture. The program that we are a part of uh, is the School Gardens Program, and we work to inspire, facilitate, and promote the creation of sustainable school gardens in K through 12 public and charter schools all over New York City. Our program has been around for about 13 years. And in that time, we've worked with over 900 schools across all five boroughs. And this is our school gardens team. So I'm Laura Casarigola. I'm one of the, the school gardens uh, managers and I work in um, Lower Manhattan and Brooklyn schools. Hi everybody, I'm Jinky Nogales and I'm the school gardens coordinator for Bronx and Upper Manhattan. Hi all, I'm Colleen Graves um, and I help schools in Queens and Staten Island. And some of you, I, I see some familiar names and faces. You might know us, you might have worked with us in the past, and some of you might be new. So we're excited to have you all here today. And I will kick it over to Jinky to get us started. Thanks, Laura. Um, so now as a new school year kicks off, it's a great time to set goals for your school garden. We know that you are all doing a million and one things, but taking a few moments to set goals now will hopefully save you time and stress later on. It'll set you up for success. Next slide. So each school is unique, just like people are. There's no one size fits all. School gardens are dynamic spaces that will have all sorts of phases. Things will go wrong, like perhaps planting things, but nothing grew, and things will go right, like having a wonderful garden event, right? So the key is to be flexible, be creative, dream big, and most of all, have fun throughout the process. So we see all different types of gardens in New York City and across the country. That means that each of you will probably have unique goals. Today, we'll go over four main areas of school gardening that your goals will probably fall into, which will organize them and help you formulate your priority, priorities for the year. Next slide. These are some of examples of gardens that we've seen in schools we've worked with. They range from the outdoor wooden raised beds, the stock tank planters, uh, milk crate planters, and the small containers like these hanging on the fence to indoor hydroponic systems and grow towers. So there's quite a variety of what your garden can look like. But before we dive in, we'd like to know what your hopes and wishes are for your school garden. You can add your responses by clicking on this Mentimeter app, or if you have a smartphone handy, you can scan this QR code and it'll take you to the app. So let's take a look. We also dropped the link in the chat so you can click that link and it'll take you to this Mentimeter. So we'll be able to see your responses in real time as you put them in. Don't be shy. <laughs> We'd love to hear what you have in mind. Again. Uh, <laughs> Someone had put in that they wish for more students and families in the garden. Definitely having a fall harvest and spring harvest, 
and a summer harvest too. So some kind of harvest all year round. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Someone wants to create a green space for students to enjoy and have fun in. Absolutely. Guys yeah, so have also said we have a blank space that is perfect for a garden that was given to us, but you have no idea where to start. Mm. However, you would love to create something beautiful and sustainable. Well, you are in the right workshop. <laughs> we are here to help. And someone wants to, someone's hoping to completely revamp the space. You want to get up and running. You're new to gardening in a new space. Yes, definitely lots to figure out and lots to learn. Uh, you want community members to participate. Yes, Excellent. that's always a, a hard one. And deepen student engagement, ownership, and access of the garden. Absolutely. And I think one last one, you want to construct a, construct a new raised bed for outdoor learning areas as well as explore year-round growing planting options. Awesome. All right. Very cool. These are great. This person here. Um, okay. So these hopes and wishes that you guys have, um, hopefully they will eventually guide you to creating your goals. And so these are some examples of common goals that we've seen from school gardeners over the years that we've worked with them, right? Um, growing food for school or wider community, um, food education that was mentioned, and teaching curricular standards. You know, you want to have activities that match with the standards because a lot of our lessons, because I was a former teacher, you know, we we have to maintain these standards. Um, okay. Oh, this is a great one. Um, another goal is to combat climate change and improve the ecosystem and social emotional well-being for not only for students, but for the teachers, the adults. And Lastly, um, a goal would be some career skills development working in the gardens, okay? So for each of these goals, you want to formulate some action steps to achieve these goals. And we'll work through a real example later on in the workshop. So once you've worked with students, with your garden committee, teachers and families to come up with shared goals, you can develop a shared mission statement to bring everything into alignment. And this is a great way to compile the goals that you've listed. Each school garden mission statement is going to be different and you want everyone invested in the garden to feel that their voice is heard, right? Um, having a mission statement will also help when you're applying for grants and funding. Funders like to see the intended use of the school garden. So this will really help when you apply for those grants. Um, here's an example of a mission statement from the eco team at IS68 in Brooklyn. So um, take a minute to read it. It'll give you some ideas of what to formulate with your goals and, and your mission statement. So I'm going to turn it over to Colleen, and she's okay. going to share those four main ideas your goals will fall into. Okay. Uh, thanks, Jinky. Um, a framework, because we have all these floating goals, and how do we coalesce those and create our um, a solid actionable plan? So a framework to help you turn your hopes into goals um, is one identified by researchers at Lehman College back in 2016. 
And at that time, they set out to measure components of successful, well-integrated garden, school garden programs in New York City at that time. And from that research, they identified four key areas that garden programs should focus on, strengthen, and then tweak as the years go on to ensure, uh, ensure continued success of the program. Um, as Jen Jinky mentioned earlier, it's not linear. A garden program is not linear at all. And it's one in which areas will might need to be worked on simultaneously, sometimes to take advantage, take over to, you know, because it, it's an ebb and flow. Um, it might be feel overwhelming that so much needs to get done at once, especially if you're starting a garden program. Um, but I assure you, once you've kind of get this rhythm of self-evaluation and see where you're at with each of these four areas, um, you'll start to see where you can advance one item at a time or two at a time and let others kind of take a back seat while you focus on, you'll get into a rhythm. Um, don't feel overwhelmed. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the four key areas that were identified um, for success are resources and support, the physical garden space, student experience in the garden, and school community involvement. We do want to stress that the definition of success for your garden program will be yours to define. As Jinky mentioned earlier, each garden is unique, so only you and your garden team, um, sorry, will be able to um, judge if you reach success and achieve your goals. By breaking down the aspects of a well-developed garden program into these arenas and their subcomponents, you can review how your school is doing within each, um, elements that might need work, and then create those goals from there. This will ensure that you're building a solid foundation for sustaining your garden program beyond just this one year. Um, because the goal is to keep this going year after year after year so the school can um, benefit from it. So this is a roadmap that we're talking about for your team that you will return to time and again for reflection and tweaking. Um, so let's kind of break down these a little bit individually so you better understand what we're talking about. Next slide, please. We'll start with resources and support. The big takeaway here that we feel very strongly about is do not carry a garden project alone. One person cannot be responsible for a school garden and have it continue to be a fully enriching program for all. You will burn out very quickly. Develop that garden committee early and not just with staff members, but also look to include parent volunteers. Um, you will need those parents for helping with bigger events, fundraising, um, maintenance, and even summer support. New York City has many organizations that help school gardeners by way of professional development, um, partnership opportunities, and funding resources. As you spend time reflecting on resources and support, perhaps you can identify some goals to focus on. Maybe you feel that you have a strong garden committee already, but it's been a while since your garden teachers were able to attend the professional development session. So perhaps this year, a goal will be to increase those opportunities for their teachers um, and find those partner organizations offering them. Or perhaps you realize you need funding for a garden expansion or the new garden space. So fall is the perfect time to identify grants to write for and then make that action, identify those grants and write them and submit those applications. So take an honest look where your school lies here and then find those actionable steps that are achievable for this year. All right, the next arena to look at is the physical space. You can ask yourself uh, when you look at your garden space, what are the best ways to organize and set up this space so that you can take a class or a group into the garden? You wanna find out like can everyone enter the garden or maybe you want to look at improving some of the accessibility, which I think is something that someone mentioned as their hope for this year is to make their garden more accessible. Um, you can also look around and see, do you have a shady spot where a group of students can sit um, if it's a hot sunny day out? Something else to think about when it comes to your physical garden space is what you wanna grow in there. Ask yourself if it's reflective of the school community. You'll wanna get ideas from people about what they're excited to grow because that means that they'll also be more excited to help take care of it. 
Um, another component of the physical space is looking at what you can realistically grow in there based on you know how much sun it gets or how much shade it gets and things like that. The other thing to keep in mind is you'll wanna craft a maintenance plan before the season gets into full swing so that you have regular watering, weeding and harvesting going on so that doesn't all again fall into one person so that you have a schedule of people to do the host of physical, of, of physical tasks in the garden. So um, an example of a goal for your physical space could perhaps be that you wanna create a seating area this year so that a class can take place in the garden. Some action steps toward a goal like that would be one to research different types of seating options and what their prices are. Uh, another action step could be asking, taking a little survey of the teachers as to how many students are in their classes that they would wanna take out at a time and make sure that your space can accommodate that. And then identify if maybe part of your outdoor classroom would it need to include a shade structure. So that's just an example of a physical space goal and its action steps. And the third thing that you wanna look at is the student experience. A school garden is a space for the students. We want students to feel a sense of belonging and ownership. And that was one of the hopes that was mentioned earlier, right? So it's an outdoor classroom where students can connect with nature and have a space for creative exploration. Um, even though math and science are a natural fit in the garden, all classes should be welcomed in this space. Um, it should be well integrated into the daily school life and be accessible to all the classes. You can post open hours or have a sign up sheet for teachers to reserve time in the garden. That could be the action um, for a goal of integrating it into the school life. Okay? Um, sometimes garden educators are hired by schools to provide certain garden lessons that complement and or supplement core content that the regular classroom teacher may not have time to teach. But it's, it's not the only way to have high student engagement. Um, our team is happy to help you come up with alternative models for engaging the students in formal and informal ways, right? So for example, um, tastings. They're incredibly impactful and it's a very low lift. Um, you wanna give students that chance to taste what they've grown. Name. Next slide. All right. Um, the last area identified as a way to kind of ensure sustained success is school community involvement. And the advice we give here is to let the garden become a space that welcomes um, and is used by the entire school community and maybe even the larger neighborhood community. Um, depending on the particulars of your garden enrichment classes, it is true that not every student may visit the garden each year during class time, but that should not stop you from welcoming and involving families in special events, volunteer days, build days, harvesting, and your summer stewardship. The more the garden seeps into the school and community culture, the more people will treasure it, want to take care of it, and work to keep the garden program alive for years. And if you realize this area is one that is lacking in a strong foundation for your school currently, uh, which I wasn't that one, somebody wanted to involve more mm -hmm. community. Sure. Um, so perhaps a goal for your school this year is to host one family fun event each season, right? It's harvest time. There can be winter solstice, spring planting, summer harvesting, you know, simple. Um, and also you can do one family volunteer event e each month. Gardens need maintenance, just have open community hours, come in every third Saturday and help us clean for two, you know, maintain the garden for two hours a, a day. The more you establish your home and that people are welcome, the more you will continue to get support to take care of the space, especially when you need it or when teachers are on summer break, whatever. Um, so reflect on this area and see what are the strengths you have going on and then those areas to improve. And maybe even reach out to the parent association and build that bridge stronger. Um, they're a valuable resource for sure. 
All right, so this is a graphic that was designed by those researchers that did the study on the um, school gardens in New York City. And I like this graphic just because it shows that it's not, there's not one linear pathway to a, what they call a well-integrated school garden. So you can see how all of these different areas feed into the ultimate goal of having a vibrant and um, sustained school garden. So I like to just show this graphic so you can kind of visualize what it looks like and how they're all feeding into each other to strengthen your garden. So what we decided to do is to take all of those four areas and their um, subcategories and we turned it into a worksheet that we call the school garden self-assessment. And so this is we're hoping could be a great tool for you, especially now that it's the kickoff of the school year. Maybe you're planning to have your first meeting of the school year or your first meeting ever for your school garden. And this is a worksheet that you can take to that meeting and fill out together as a committee so you can identify strengths and areas for growth. And that will also lead you to come up with your shared goals and your action steps. So I'm going to actually not go to the next slide. I'm gonna take you to the self-assessment worksheet. Can you see this? Okay. So this is the school garden self-assessment. It's pretty straightforward. You kind of go through each of the four categories and you rank yourself um, where you think you fall on, on each of these. So for example, we could um, look at the, the garden and upkeep and you can rate yourself and see, is that kind of a low where only a couple people maintain the garden? Is it moderate where there's a passionate group or is it like high engagement where you have a designated group maintains a garden, that's, that's no problem, you got that um, going. And you can do the same for the areas of student experience and the school community. And so this kind of just lays out all of those things that you can do you know, a self-survey and see where you fall. So once you get to the bottom of this, I would definitely acknowledge the strengths of your school garden program because it takes you know, a village to get these things off the ground in the first place and keep them going. So definitely uh, tap yourselves on the back for doing such a great job and especially in the, the areas where you're rating yourselves as high um, because that is a huge accomplishment. And then look at the areas for growth and that you can discuss among your garden committee and come up with actionable steps um, that you can take towards the goals that you wanna work on for this year. And you can also lay out, maybe you have a lot of goals, so you wanna focus on three this year. And then in year two, maybe you branch out and do more student engagement. Maybe year three, you wanna do more community engagement so that you kind of have these action steps and these, these goals to, um, to work with. And then at the end, we, we also reproduced that diagram for you there. So this is a worksheet that we will email to you after this um, workshop so that you can take it and run with it. Okay, so we've come to the part of the workshop where we wanna do a short interactive activity with you. So uh, we wanna take a few minutes to workshop a real life school garden goal together. At the beginning of the workshop, we asked you to share your hopes and wishes in that Mentimeter. So we'd like one person to raise their hand, unmute and share your garden goal with the group. And then we'll take a few minutes to brainstorm together as a group and think of possible action steps to help you reach that goal. So let me actually take us to this Mentimeter because maybe someone um, on here would like to just share theirs and then uh, we can take a few minutes to work through it together. So don't be shy. Is there anyone who wants to be brave and use this opportunity to share their garden goal and get some, some great uh, crowdsourced solutions or action steps? I see Katrina, is that, Katrina, are you raising your hand there? Yeah, it looks like I'm uh, waving because I couldn't find it. 
Perfect. That works. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us what school you're with and share your garden goal with us. Oh, yes. Let me sh show my face, right? That always makes awesome. sense. Yeah. So my name is Katrina Duncan. I work at PS135. Last year, um, myself and another teacher, we started an indoor garden in an old classroom. Um, I had saw this post on Facebook and the teacher, I don't know where she was, in another state had one of those hydroponic gardens in her classroom. So mm -hmm. I wrote um, a Donish Choose and I got the lettuce farm stand. Um, and then um, I had another donation from the after school program Legacy and they donated another one. And then we wrote a Donish Choose and we got about 10 of the little small ones that you can grow herbs with. Cool. So we started that, we incorporated having like a green team, um, talked about sustainability, we went on trips. So this year I was thinking, how can we get the kids and the parents more involved? So I had put down um, that I wanted to do, um, uh, what is it I put down? I wanted to do cooking classes. So I did write another's Donish Choose <laughs> and um, I got a blender, the Vitamix blender and- uh -huh. I got um what is that pot I have one a uh, instapot so uh, yes. um, and a and a fryer ninja fryer I believe in donuts choose they're like the best thing so we have those three <laughs> things so now I wanted to cook with the kids but I also wanted to um introduce them to food that they were never introduced because I feel like some communities they don't have access to different vegetables and fruits that other communities have. And I was telling my students that I took a year off and I went to Russia and at 38 years old in Siberia, I learned about dill. I never <laughs> knew about dill at all because I grew up in a poor community and I never knew about dill. And um, I want them to learn about things when they're young. So mm -hmm. the goal is to do cooking lessons with parents. Awesome. That's the one okay. goal. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's all put our thinking caps on. I'll give us maybe a minute or two. If you have like a little notebook nearby or a notes app open, you can maybe write down what are a couple of ways that uh, a couple of goals and actions or a couple of action steps that Katrina and her school could maybe take um, in order to do cooking classes with students and families this year. Mm -hmm. So I did, let me just add one thing. Uh -huh. like a, I'm like a little rabbit in a little hole. I did hook up with this man from the New York City Department of Education. And yeah. I never knew about this program. I forgot who told me about it, but he's like a chef and he <laughs> comes into the school mm -hmm. and he takes whatever you're growing and he brings his food in, and I forgot his name because he's coming in November. George, Chef George, George, George Edwards. George. <laughs> yes. So George is coming in. So that's what like sustainability is like. George will leave because he says he has a lot of schools. So I don't want it to be like a one event. I want yeah. it to be something that we can it can live on every month if possible. Yeah. That's a great goal. Um, so for those that are listening in, you can type it into the chat. Uh, let's brainstorm some action steps for Katrina to fulfill this goal. It's very ambitious. So this is going to help me because I have no idea <laughs> how to really incorporate it. I love that you have all the tools already. So that's yeah. one step ahead. <laughs> yes. I'll give everyone about 30 more seconds to, to keep thinking, and then I'll ask if anyone has some things to share. And I think our team is having some thoughts as well.
All right. So hopefully we all had a minute to think about it. I can kick it off with one idea that I had, and then I will open up the floor for other people. And I see someone put something in the chat, but we can also, if you want to share it out loud, you can raise your hand um, and unmute and do that. So I'll share one idea that I had is um, perhaps you could ask students and, and families um, if any of them have a special dish that they would want to teach to others um, during one of the, the events, because I think a great way to involve people is if they're excited about something that they want to share with others, it's a way for them to share something that they are an expert on and that is very meaningful to them, but could be very new to everyone else in the room. So that could be kind of a one fun way to, to go about um, community and parent engagement with this project. All right, does someone else want to uh, unmute and share their idea? I'm seeing some great ideas in the chat. So I'll I'll read them out, the ones in the chat, if people are a little shy to come uh, off mute. I just see that tap put in here that they've hosted a few small tastings in the cafeteria during lunch, which have been popular. That's a great idea to work it into the school day. And that could even be kind of like a teaser trailer about actual full on cooking classes, just to have a small tasting and kind of drum up some enthusiasm during the day in the cafeteria. I think that's a great idea. All right, I see Dave here pointed out the Edible Schoolyard Grant, which they did just open up today. It's a seat to table fellowship grant and they will um, support gardening and cooking classes at New York City schools. And I see that Colleen put the link to that um, and that we also have it linked in our newsletter. That sounds like a great opportunity for this type of project. Tap also mentioned that um, they recommend keeping the recipes simple. You do kind of have, you know, uh, one hour, probably depends on how long your class is, but usually it's a one hour window to create this dish. Um, yeah, so keeping it simple is, is probably key. And I'm also curious, yeah. since you want to open it up to families, I mean, maybe there's a parent there who's actually a chef or connected through their network of friends to a chef or someone who just really likes cooking. And maybe they could actually be a host one night if your school is willing to let you do um, something after hours. Um, maybe they can come and maybe they're going to be awesome with the children and be exciting and get them excited. Um, I love Dill. So, <laughs> I mean, a, a dill cucumber salad, that's like awesome. Um, and one of my children's favorites, but um, I would definitely ask around your parent community who really likes to cook, who has a passion for it. Cause you might be able to pull them in to help um, as well. I also, yeah. I love Olivia's um suggestion here. Um, Olivia's focusing a bit more on the marketing and the publicity for the event, mm -hmm. which is an important piece of this. So uh, Olivia recommends partnering with the PTA to publicize and also to help with the setup and breakdown, because you definitely don't want to be the lone person spending hours and hours cleaning the cutting boards and the ninja and the instant pot yourself. <laughs> so you're going to want a crew. Um, the green team could you know, use their art skills to create flyers and share with the school. And then adding the events to the school-wide calendar uh, might help with getting the word out. I could see this as also being a fun opportunity to kind of publicize it as like some sort of like Iron Chef or cooking competition. And maybe not a competition if, you know, depending on, you know, what you want the vibe to be, but kind of making it fun in that way too. It's like a cooking show kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, Lately, there's been these monthly themes. I think we just started um, Mexican Heritage Month. I think that's what it is for this month. Um, maybe you can uh, customize 
whatever you're cooking with that month, right? Um, and, you know, posting it to families and parents because I guarantee they will love to come into the classroom and, and cook for the kids, so. Um, I also wanna offer another one of our education programs is a nutrition education and we have a free um, curriculum root camp um, that one of our colleagues, Sophia, runs. And it's really teachers get training and teachers are teaching it. Sophia is not really popping into the room to teach your students, but she's giving you the tools and there's, um, I think the ingredients come free, all the ins and outs. So it's at no cost to the school, I should say, or the teacher. Um, but there's also programs like that to continue the nutrition and cooking education with your students. Um, whether it's through our program, there's also a myriad of other programs in the city that do have little um, for classroom-based cooking if the families can't come in or you want to do something independent of families to strengthen that program and reinforce it. Um, anyway, yeah, so that route too. Because I know Chef, Chef George is awesome, but Chef can't George can't be there every week, <laughs> despite how tasty he is, if his food is. Yes. And, how, um, can you give me that information in the chat, the, the curriculum that you were just talking about? Yeah. The root camp. Root camp, yes. Yeah. It's on our, our uh, education website, so I can actually show you that in a minute as well. I can take, I was planning to take everyone over there. So I love all those ideas. Thank you all for contributing. And Katrina, I'm very excited to hear how these cooking classes go this year. I think you got some great ideas and it sounds like you have a great program going already. So best of luck with that. And thank you for sharing. Um, okay, so how can we help you grow NYC specifically? Um, we're kind of, uh, besides brainstorming sessions like this, um, and if you would like to definitely, you know, we did one here, we helped Katrina, but for folks who didn't get to chat today or weren't comfortable putting it out into the world, what your goal is, um, feel free to reach back out to us and we can have a one-on-one -on -one brainstorm session with you. Absolutely help me, happy to do that with you. And that's kind of really the bread and butter of what we do. We're here as a free resource to answer your garden questions, wherever you are in your garden journey from day one to we've had our garden for 10 years and rats just showed up and we don't know what to do. We can tell you what to do. Um, we're, that's our job. We're here to help you. That's really what we do. Um, so besides answering your questions, we provide these workshops through the year on a variety of questions. Um, we can do our, our consultations in person or virtual, some capacities for site visits, especially if you're really having trouble getting off the ground or a problem has erupted and you just need to navigate. Um, sometimes we're really good at bringing, especially different school agencies to the table if you're having a hard time say getting school construction authority at the table. Sometimes we can kind of help broker those meetings to have your parties come together um, to meet and discuss um, if there's a problem. Um, we can't, um, we also have periodic giveaways. Stay tuned, our seed giveaway is coming up earlier this year. We're gonna do it in October. So um, stay tuned for that, it's free seeds for your school. Um, our program publishes a monthly newsletter, and I personally think this is kind of cool just because it's where we post not just our events, but we're highlighting other partner organization events around the city that are school garden focused, um, as well as that's where you can get your grants each month, what grants are available. We have a grants section. Um, stay, sign up for that. Get that monthly newsletter so you know what's happening each month. Um, our website is chock full of information guides and recordings of past workshops. I know Laura's gonna walk you quickly through how to find stuff on our website, but we have a deep workshop library on a gazillion gardening topics that we've done through the years. Um, so from nuts and bolts of gardening to some of headier stuff, it's there. Um, and especially for the teachers on the call today, 
Um, we also maintain a list of DOE vendors for garden related items. So especially if you have to follow DOE procurement rules, we try to keep that list up to date as best we can. Um, so that's, we've done that work for you. Um, we've here, we're again, we're here to answer your questions. We do the research for you if we can. So it's a little easier on your end. We're just a free resource. Um, tap into us. Next slide. Um, and even though all of our stuff is free, today is free, information on our website is free, we do ask schools to go ahead and register with our program. Um, and in doing so, it just really opens up. You, you, If you want those giveaways throughout the year, you have to be registered with us. Um, for school visits, definitely have to be registered with us. Um, it's really easy to do. It takes very little time on your end. Um, you can find the registration link on our website. Uh, Jinky also has put together this great little how-to video um, to answer any questions you have on exactly what we're looking for or how to do it because our um, it can be confusing. You just have to kind of renew it every year and you're good to go. That's It's really simple. Um, if you should have trouble logging in and creating an account, that might just mean somebody, a former staff member um, maybe created it, but maybe they've retired or moved to a different school. Reach out to us, we can troubleshoot it. We can get you fresh on the account and give you the password and stuff. So don't let that trip you up. We can get you on. Thanks, Colleen. So um, one of the other ways that we can help you and support you is through this school gardens handbook. We, you know, we've published this and we're really happy to share it with you. Over the years, we've asked a lot of questions um, and we ourselves have learned so we've, sorry, we get asked a lot of questions from the school gardeners and we've learned from them as well. So we decided to write it all down and this will help you every step of the way of your goal setting. Right, so this is the handbook. It's a comprehensive guide and it's a compilation of 10 plus years of experience working with over 900 schools in all the five boroughs. We've distilled best practices, resources, some technical considerations like you find a rat in your garden, right? So what can you do about it? And and much, much more into this one place. So it's meant to be a starting point, whether you're on a brand new school garden journey, a school garden rebirth after some years without use, or an expansion or new addition into an existing school garden. Um, in a little bit, Laura will show you how you can find this handbook into our, in our webpage. Okay, hey, so this is a list of the topics in our handbook. Don't feel overwhelmed. <laughs> um, and this slide doesn't even include our appendix. And it's filled with worksheets, carpentry plans, um, templates, right? So we don't have time to go over all of these topics today, but we'd love to hear in the chat which of these topics is on your mind. Hey, are you trying to find ways to use that harvest, whether it's sampling or cooking during class, perhaps donating to mutual aid? Um, over the pandemic, one of our school gardens actually did that. They found a mutual aid group in the neighborhood and they partnered with them and donated their harvest. Hey, or perhaps you want to set up a farm stand at your school. Okay, so we have all that information and much, much more in this guide. But yet, you know, we're happy to answer questions today during the Q&A. And you can always reach us at any time. All right. Just check to see if you guys have written anything that you're interested in learning about. Or feel free to unmute and share. You can't think of one 
and you know we can um, you can email us if you think of one or we'll share during the q a okay. david is saying that they all sound pretty interesting <laughs> oh great <laughs> i agree they're all helpful <laughs> thank you david okay. so what before we move on um we do suggest that you do a deep dive into this handbook and it'll help you get some ideas for your goal setting and you know eventually it'll lead you to formulating your mission statement so please please check it out yeah I do remember um, one person at the beginning one of their hopes for this year was to do something with like getting greenhouses so that they could have um, uh, an extended se growing season so for example, one of our chapters in here is season extension. And so that goes through all the different ways that you can do season extension at a school garden, whether it's greenhouses and what that entails, um, if it's cold frames, if it's using fleecy row cover. So we kind of lay out all of the different options for how you can do season extension, how much it costs and things like that. So that's where this can really come in handy. We get into very specific details. All right. And... So this is another guide to help your garden going. It's called A Year in the Life of the School Garden. Yeah, next slide. Thanks. Okay, so um, maintaining a school garden isn't always as simple as it looks. There are multiple facets that are involved and tasks are not always linear nor intuitive. If one of your garden goals is to have a robust garden committee, I think somebody mentioned that earlier, um, look into this guide and go behind the scenes with the garden committee meetings, budgeting, events, and fundraising to keep the school garden sustainable for the long term. You'll, you will find that and it lists um, these actions every month. So that's another way that the guide is organized. Um, if you're, we're in September now, so you can look at September and see what the garden committee has to do as far as for budgeting. You know, you can apply for grants to help you fund um, your garden. And if your goal is to work with students in the garden, we share tips on how students can help and um, some seasonal activities to keep them engaged. Right? So again, you can find all this and our other resources on the Grow NYC education page, which Laura will now show you how to do. Yes, so oops, uh, we'll put in the chat. The URL is growNYCeducation.org. So this is a kind of a separate website from our general growNYC.org website. This is specifically one where we wanted to put all of our education resources. So as you can see, it's a great one-stop shop for everything we've mentioned today. You can sign up for our newsletter. You can also look at our latest newsletter, which is one for September that we sent out last week. Um, you can sign up for our upcoming events. We've got some great ones coming up and our resources are here as well as in these little bubbles. It's kind of the same thing here. So we have our K through 12 curricula. We have some great ones, especially for high school. Um, we have a farm stand business and food justice. This K through 12 curricula is also where you'll find the root camp nutrition education. Um, one that Colleen was mentioning to uh, Katrina before. So I'll just show you one of these. I'll go into one of these bubbles. This is where we house our school garden guides. So here you can view the entire handbook. You can view our year in the life of a school garden as well as a lot of our other stuff that we've been working on in the past few years. It's also where we compile any other turnkey resources like planting calendars, um, classroom projects that you can do that are growing. Mm -hmm. We have some carpentry plans here. And this is where we house a lot of our educator uh, resources as well, such as that list for if you wanna buy garden supplies through DOE vendors, this is where that list lives. So that's just a quick overview of our website. We've got a lot on there. So hopefully you have a chance to check it out. Uh, thanks, Laura. Um, so before we open the floor to questions, I wanna mention uh, that we have several upcoming workshops this fall. Um, they're a mix of in-person and virtual and a variety of topics. Um, 
We have what virtual one next Monday with our teaching gardens staff about gardening for climate change, which I think next week starts climate week here in the city. Um, and you'll also notice there's going to be a root camp uh, orientation in mid October for those interested there. Um, so please keep checking our Eventbrite page throughout the year and see what we're up to. And we hope to see you back in this space. I also want to highlight the one next week, also teaching core academic content. Oh, yes. Um, that one is actually an in-person workshop. We do still have some spots available. And so any of you that put um, that you're interested in integrating uh, the garden with core curricular content, that is going to be your perfect workshop. Um, Jinky, you're touching on a few different subjects in there, right? We are. We end through various grades as well. So we've got the science, we've got the ELA, social studies aspects, and math. Um, and this is in partnership with Edible Schoolyard, as well as Queens Botanic Garden. So it's a pack full of information. So yeah. please do come. And I've also uh, shared these events and upcoming workshops on the chat. Great. Um, and we don't to close out by mentioning again that fall is the best time to start fundraising for a spring build. Um, and depending though on what you decide, uh, your design of the garden and the budget you come up with, you either are gonna need one, two seasons to really do that fundraising. Um, so we're here to help connect you with those local and national grants for school gardens and either free or reduced prices if we can find them for you. Um, and it's, if you've identified that as a goal of yours this year, now's the perfect time to pay attention to what's coming available get your grant writing team together. Um, I know when I was a school gardener, I'm terrible at a first draft, but I can have the garden speak. You know, I can do all the garden language. I'm a terrible technical writer, but I had lots of parents on my team who didn't know the garden aspect, but were better at, at editing. And so that's how we tag teamed it terrible first draft, but they would whip it into shape for me. So gather your team now in advance of when an application is due and comes available. Um, again, sign up for our monthly newsletter um, so you can pay attention to all those grants. Also the Department of Energy and Sustainability, they have a grants website as well off of their sustainability hub. So you can pay attention there too. Um, I'll point out that upcoming in October, their sustainability grant is going to be opening up. So put that on your radar. Um, DOE staff can apply for that. PA Parent associations can't. Um, it has to go to the school's budget. Um, so just pay attention to that. We'll announce it once we hear um, that it's out and open and we're happy to help you guys through whatever their process is this year. Um, definitely feel free to reach out with any grant related questions you have for here. Okay. And with that, uh, we have some time for some questions. I know I want to be mindful. It is just five o'clock. Um, so obviously, if you have to dash, um, thanks for joining us. But if you would like to stay and ask a few questions, feel free to um, share us what's on your mind. I see the yes. first question is from Tiffany. Could the slideshow be emailed? Yes, I will send this out in our follow-up email after this workshop. And mm -hmm. um, you can also email us anytime if you want to set if you want to set up a, you know, a call with us to kind of talk over more of this in depth as well. And I will say in case um, some people who have to dash. We do have a workshop feedback survey, if you wouldn't um, mind. We'd love feedback. That helps us um, create stronger presentations in the future. And we do listen to what you're interested in and want to tailor as best we can. Don't see any questions at the Q and A. I will say you're all very welcome. 
all the thank yous that are coming. We're very welcome to your week. And I just, know. I would like to say, I feel so overwhelmed with information in the best way possible that I feel, I almost feel like I need to have a part two of this workshop just to come up with my list of questions because like you've got my wheels turning and my brain thinking about so many things that I know our committee has not been thinking about and this is great. So greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, Sandra. And yeah. the part two could be just a one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of us. Yes, We're absolutely. I am taking you up on that. <laughs> where, can I ask where your school is? Uh, our school is located in Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn, okay. uh, newly relocated from downtown Brooklyn. Gotcha. All right. Well, yeah. in that case, I, uh, I'm your coordinator for that region. So I look forward to, to connecting with you. Excellent. Before I leave, how do you make um, an appointment? Because I know the problem last year is I had um, outfits. I think those little bugs, they were driving us crazy. And I didn't know how to, I just didn't know what to do. So mm -hmm. do we like, how do we get in contact like to say, can, or who do I talk with? Because I have to do the Queens person, right? Or email address, right? Yeah, so you can, we have like one email address just to make it easier. So it's schoolgardens at grownyc.org. So you can email us anytime. Um, it'll go to Colleen. And then also once you have her email, you'll have that direct contact as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. This was like the best workshop I've attended this year. Oh my goodness. Awesome. Yeah, thank thank you. This you. school this school year or you got that, right, Colleen? Calendar year. <laughs> you got that one though. <laughs> no, this I was like this school year just started, but this is like <laughs> have to live up to it anything after. Thank you so much, ladies. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming. It's great to see you. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. You too. All righty. All right, I think we can call it. Thank you all so much for joining and uh, we look forward to hearing from you, connecting with you. Have a great night. I think it's just us. I think it's just us.